Hey, Coach, how do you replace Grant in your secondary, and just what? how big a blow was that, losing him for the year? Yeah, that, that situation was, was really disappointing for us um, just because, what a, you know, what a great player teammate that Grant is. And, uh, you know, he just came in here and uh, did a really nice job with the opportunities that were given to him, uh, really worker mentality and uh, came out with a chip on his shoulder and was making some plays. And that was, uh, you know, that was hard to see. Um, you know, moving forward, we try to be solution oriented. And I even talked to him about that. And I think it's been cool to see his, how, how he's been putting into his focus of, okay, it happened, I'm over it, and now I'm moving forward. And so we're trying to do the same thing as a team and as a defensive backfield is uh, take an opportunity to get, be solution oriented and uh, kind of move forward. I, I know Andrew's been the guy out there with the first team. Do you see him this late in his career still being able to be an every down safety for you? You know, we're in, uh, in the process of evaluation every single day and uh, kind of seeing what we put on tape. I think that's been a, a focus on for all of the guys is that our identity is who we are on tape and uh, just with having a limited amount of time of evaluating these guys and like things change every single practice. So it's, and we're trying to constantly evaluate where we're going to be, who the best pieces are. We're constantly trying to move them around, give them different looks at different things to see who, are, you know, who our best 11 are. Nate Ulrich, your line is open. Coach, who, what is your evaluation of some of those like Sheldrick Redwine, for example, with, with Delta going down, can, can he, uh, be a guy you think you could capitalize on an opportunity. Yeah, Nate. Um, yeah, it's it's been good. Sheldrick's getting some more reps, getting more opportunities. Uh, just trying to find the niche for for what his skill set is. You know, it's it's different. You know, different safeties have it's it's kind of a position that's unique in that you can you can insert them in different spots and. Uh, just seeing what what skill set he's best at, you know, whether playing in the middle of the field, um, man to man, down on the second level. But it's a it's a unique position, and it's one of the reasons why I love it so much. But it's kind of just evaluating to see what Sheldrick can do and um, how he competes with the group. Um, and I feel like that you know that position group has a, a bunch of guys that are really competing right now. And and then it um, you know coming in obviously to this job. You inherited uh, Denzel Ward and, and Greedy Williams. Uh, what, what do you think about each of those guys and their potential as a tandem and uh, mm -hmm. for, uh, yeah, yeah. kind of really, hope for uh, getting Greedy back uh, soon? Right. Uh, really excited about, you know, Greedy and Denzel. Uh, just witnessing their work ethic every day and their attention to detail and you know, any opportunities that they, they have on the field, they're, they're spinning it, working on their craft and working on the details or, you know, their position is, you know, unique footwork, uh, eye progressions. But uh, if you guys are out, you can see, you know, anytime we have a special teams period, we're trying to do something where we're working on our game and they've really bought into that. And uh, I'm excited just to see where they're headed. Mary Kay Cabot is next. Hey, hey, Coach, um, I, I know you guys have the, the next man up mentality, and I do understand that. Uh, but just looking at your position and mm -hmm. the adversity that you've had to go through uh, mm -hmm. in the last couple of weeks, mm -hmm. I don't really remember one position group, you know, just having so many things happen to it in such a short period of time. Mm -hmm. uh, even, even if you just take the one day with, with Grant going down and then greedy walking off. And I think Stuart might've even left that yeah, day. Yeah. So uh, my, my question is just, uh, you know, again, I, I know that everybody has to take these things in stride, but this has been a little extraordinary, hasn't it? Yeah. Starting with the Kevin Johnson lacerated liver. Yeah. Yeah, it was. I mean, that, that day, it's funny you mentioned that day. That was a lot that happened to us, but uh, you know, I've spent a lot of time talking to our group about, 
being a good player is bigger than, you know, our athletic traits and being able to, I feel like football really doesn't produce character. It really, really tests character. And that, that situation is one example of that. And it's, uh, especially with our guys, you know, we're going to go through the season. It's going to be tough and you were going to get hit in the mouth and it's, how are you going to handle it? So, you know, at first when all that went down, you could tell that there was a little bit of, oh, geez. But then, you know, we came back and talked amongst the group and really talked them through the challenge of what are you going to do if this happens to us? If, you're, if your opportunity is called, are you going to be ready for it? Because I think in this, in this day and age, as, as competitive as this league is, you're going to get one shot and you got to be ready for your shot. And it was cool to see that the next day we came out and really competed and did, did well. So that was fun to fun to be around. And it's something that I feel like for the group, it was, it was something that they could learn and uh, hopefully we can take, take it with us moving forward. Are you hoping that you uh, took all your lumps in, in a week and a half? And Yeah, exactly. No doubt. <laughs> no doubt. Thanks, Coach. Thanks. We'll go to Tony Grossi. Hey, Jeff. I think today was the 12th day of camp. I don't know whether it's 11 or 13, whatever it is. And we weren't out there today, but every time I've been out there, there's been at least – one interception it's either by the dbs or the linebackers or someone mm -hmm. my question is one do you have a number you could tell us how many total have been in camp and two is there any do you significant how much significance is the frequency of the interceptions out there yeah thanks tony i don't have a specific number for you because uh we, we track it by the day but it's almost like next day next opportunity mentality with the group and it's like what have you done for me lately so we kind of keep that in the front of their minds is we're always hungry for more um, we have done a good job of attacking the ball and it's been something that we stress and something that I've been trying to teach uh, looking for opportunities and uh, the more you search them out and the more you're looking for them you know you tend to find them excellent our next question will be from Dan Lobby hey coach uh, just going back to Denzel, he told us that you guys are, are kind of working with him on, on a new technique, I think he said in press coverage. Um, can, can you kind of expand on that a little bit, what you saw and, and what you're trying to change? And then just in general, I mean, how good can Denzel Ward be? Thanks, Dan. Yeah, you know, with, with Denzel, he was obvious, he's obviously a, a good player. You know, he was a pro bowler two years ago, um, very productive player. He has a great, you know, as far as his skill set and God-given abilities, he has he has them. Um, what you're you know what you're looking for in an elite corner, you know I always want to try to add value to my players, and so we kind of just went back and looked. You know I watched all his targets from last year, and you know really just try to assess him, tell him where I was at, and then um, come up with a plan of ways that we could feel like you know, he could possibly improve on his game. And that's what's, you know, that growth mindset is something that I can really see in Denzel. Every time he comes out to, on the field, he's really trying to get better. Um, he's really trying to compete and uh, he doesn't like to lose. And that's really what you like to see in the corner. Thanks. Thanks, Sam. We have four hands up. We'll make these our last four, Tom Withers. Hey coach, thanks for the time. You were talking before how adversity tests character. And I guess that applies not only to players, but to coaches. Yeah. You've been with Kevin for a number of years, and this has been obviously extraordinary circumstances. So right. how would you say he's handled this and um, how difficult has this been on all of you guys? Right. Yeah, thanks, Sal. Um, it's, been, it's been, you know, obviously unique. And uh, just with, you know, so many things that are going on in our world today that, you know, not only affect me, my, our players, but you guys as well, um, just with COVID, you know, the civil unrest, uh, political unrest with all that. And then dealing in that environment, I, it's been fun to watch, you know, Kevin work. Uh, something he always talks about is we need to find a way. And regardless of the situation, you know, find a way to get it done and really trying to focus on solutions and not problems. And, uh, not get too bent out of shape when things don't go our way or 
just try to handle it the best that we possibly can and move on. And I feel like his leadership has pushed that through the rest of the group and with the team. And that's, that's been fun to watch. Has that always kind of been his way? I know this is his first time, obviously, in the head coaching role, but I'm sure you probably saw some of those character traits along the way. Yeah, absolutely. I've seen Kevin go through a lot, you know, some very challenging situations uh, as an individual coach, as, as also as like a coordinator um, or a leader. And I've always been in, impressed with how he handles himself. Thank you. Yeah. Scott Patrick, you're up. Hey, Coach, I know you talked about Sheldrick a little bit on the field. Um, I was wondering, he's a member of that social justice committee. Uh, what's it like off the field? Um, you know, we didn't get to know him a ton last year as a rookie. He was kind of quiet. Um, so, so what's he like? How does he embrace that role? Yeah. Um, Sheldrick is a he, – he's a smart guy. Uh, he talked about, you know, how he, how he spent his off season, you know, reading, trying to better himself. He would send me uh, this summer. He would send me like motivational clips in the morning. It, it was cool, uh, you know. As far as that, the social justice piece, I think that's something that's been positive for our team. I thought that, you know, that's something that we uh, that Kevin initiated. I think it's good. It's uh, in our world today, everybody wants leaders. I feel like you got to give them a voice before they can lead, and it's cool to. Uh, see Kevin give that group of guys that voice for their team and also, you know, give them a little bit of range of to move and uh, give them some ideas to do so that we can, you know, positively affect our community. And uh, hopefully we can keep building on that and day by day take a little, little bit of chips and uh, improve, you know, our not only, you know, our organization and the people in us, but just the world around us and especially the community of Cleveland. Thanks. Next question goes to Aditi Kingabwala. Hi, on the um, sort of the cliche, the idea, iron sharpens iron. Your guys are getting to go under a very premier group of pass catchers, both at wide receiver and tight end. Is there anything you can share about the way the two groups work together or any of the receivers standing out in any way and how they're helping your younger DBs with what they do. And is there anything like that that you can share? Yeah, I like that. I like what you said. Iron truck, <laughs> iron. It's like the more challenged, the more challenging the situation, it causes you either rise up to it or, you know, you fail. So um, I've enjoyed the challenge of, you know, covering those guys and our guys, and they don't take it lightly. And, uh, you know, every time they go out there, they're trying to prove prove themselves, and that's kind of the mentality that that we want in the group. And uh, so that's just we want to compete, and we're getting to compete with some really good players. Excellent. Our last question will be from Mary Kay Cabot. Hey, Coach, just wondering, um, you know, and looking out there and seeing uh, Terrence Mitchell a little bit yesterday step in for, for Greedy. Uh, in the event that, you know, that you have to, to throw him out there for the opener or whatever, mm -hmm. I'm not really asking you for an update on that necessarily, but if he has to be your guy, yeah. um, how do you feel about Terrence's uh, performance on the field, his leadership ability and all that stuff? Right, right. Yeah, thanks, Mary Kay. Uh, Terrence has had a good camp. You know, but prior to – he was one of those guys that was nicked up for a, for a day or two. Um, I think he's really honed in on the techniques that we're trying to teach, and uh, he's, he's been very coachable. Uh, he's, he's a smart, smart player. You know, in the off season, he kind of really stood out. And we would try to continuously try to assess our guys. And, you know, in the off season, the way it was, it was a little bit unique. But uh, we would end up quizzing on – you know, pretty much daily. And he was one of the leaders of the group. So he's, a, he's an intelligent player. Uh, he's taken that, the things that he's learned uh, during the off season and really kind of applied it. So he's, he's made the most of his reps. He's had some plays on the ball that were impressive and uh, really excited, excited to continue to work and, uh, you know, evaluate him as we keep, you know, getting closer to that week one game.